So here's a really important example of homeostasis in the body of an animal, specifically uh, humans. And it's maintaining the proper blood glucose level. Now, the first thing you need to realize is that glucose is a simple sugar. It's what we call a monosaccharide, the smallest, simplest type of sugar. And it's very important in biology. Glucose is the main fuel, the primary fuel that your cells burn uh, in the mitochondria, if you wanna get into cell structure, uh, your cells burn this sugar for energy. And, and all of the energy that we need to maintain life, to divide our cells, to build proteins and DNA, and all the things that we need to stay alive, to contract our muscles and make our heart beat and make the brain function, all of that energy to do those things comes from the burning of glucose or at least most of it does. And so you, it's absolutely essential that you have glucose in your bloodstream so that all of the cells of your body can obtain it and use it for energy. Now, too much of a good thing can be bad. If you have too much glucose, if, if your blood glucose level is too high, uh, it becomes toxic and it can damage your cells. It can damage your eyes. It can damage your kidneys and your blood vessels and cause all kinds of really bad problems. Um, if your blood glucose level is too low, your cells don't have enough fuel, you run out of energy and you die. So it's pretty important that we maintain the proper amount of glucose, not too much, not too little. So let me walk you through this example. So there are times when your blood glucose level is, is too high, it's elevated. This happens pretty much every time you eat a meal especially if you eat something sweet, uh, drink a soft drink, or eat any food that has carbohydrate, bread, pasta, those things, when we digest those foods, uh, it, it turns into glucose. And so we have an elevated amount of glucose uh, in the blood. And remember, glucose is a good thing, but too much glucose is bad. So you actually have a part of your brain called the hypothalamus that senses that there's too much glucose in the blood the hypothalamus sends a message through the nervous system to the pancreas. The pancreas is down in your belly, your, in your abdomen, and the pancreas secretes a hormone called insulin. Now, uh, insulin helps you to lower your blood glucose level, bring it back to a normal level, and it does so in two ways. Uh, and it's important that you know both of these ways. So, so when insulin is released from your pancreas, it travels throughout the body in your bloodstream, and it does two things. Uh, first, uh, it causes every cell in your body, every skin cell, muscle cell, kidney cell, whatever, to take in some of that glucose. Remember, the problem is we've got too much glucose in the blood. So one way to solve that is to get all the other body cells to take in some of that glucose. And insulin causes your body cells to do that. The other thing that happens, insulin causes your liver, which is also in your abdomen here, uh, to take in some of that glucose and convert it into a more complex sugar called glycogen. Glycogen is what we call a polysaccharide. So it's, it's basically a glucose bonded to a glucose, bonded to another glucose, bonded to another glucose, 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 glucose. It's a long strand of sugar that can be stored for later use. But the point is, it's taking some of that excess glucose out of the blood. Um, so insulin uh, causes your body cells to take in glucose, it also causes your liver to convert some of that glucose into glycogen. And those two things combined cause your blood glucose level to return back down to a normal level. And so remember that that's the goal is to get is to maintain homeostasis. Um, now, it'll stay like that for a while. But remember, every cell in your body is burning glucose as a fuel. So eventually the level is going to drop. And if it's been a long time since your last meal, um, you know, if you, if you ate breakfast at seven o'clock in the morning and then you don't have lunch until 12 or one, 
if you don't eat a snack somewhere in there, at some point your blood glucose level is going to get low, too low, and you start to feel tired, you start to feel sluggish, and, and if it drops really low, you pass out. You can fall into a, a hypoglycemic coma, and if it stays like that, eventually the result is, uh, is death. So this is pretty uh, significant. So our body has to have a way to uh, sort of get us through those, those stretches where our blood glucose level falls too low. And I mean, obviously, sometimes you're just in a place where you can't eat a meal. It's not appropriate to eat a snack. And so how do you stay alive during those times? So when your blood glucose level is too low, the hypothalamus in your brain uh, senses that, sends another message to the pancreas. And this time the pancreas releases a different hormone, not insulin. This time it's called glucagon. And just like insulin, glucagon is a hormone that can travel through the bloodstream to all parts of the body, but eventually that glucagon hormone is going to reach your liver. And it's going to cause the liver to do the exact opposite of what it did before. It causes the liver to take those long chains of glycogen. Remember that was a polysaccharide, a big long chain. It causes the liver to break that up, to break it back into little pieces of sugar. In other words, glycogen is broken down to make lots and lots of glucose. And then that glucose goes back into the bloodstream, which causes that low blood glucose level to rise back up to a normal level. And again, that's the goal, right? Homeostasis means maintaining a stable internal environment. In this case, a stable amount of glucose so that we've got enough to supply our energy needs, but so that we don't have too much, which would damage our cells, or too little, which would result in passing out or death. So that's a really good example of homeostasis. Okay, so finally we have reached number nine, the final characteristic that all living organisms share in common, and that is DNA. All living things, every bacteria, every fungus, every plant, every animal, every person has a molecule called DNA stored inside every single cell. And it's a molecule that can store and transmit genetic information. In other words, it's a molecule that contains instructions. It tells our cells how to build the proteins that they need to build. And ultimately, it stores the information that makes our eyes brown or blue. It makes our hair curly or straight. It makes you look the way you do. Uh, it makes you a human rather than an oak tree. Um, and uh, so DNA stands for this big, big long term here, deoxyribonucleic acid, D-N-A. Um, and if you take a look at the... Uh, at the structure of it, you, you see these letters in the middle of the DNA molecule. Those, those uh, letters, of course, really are just symbols that stand for chemical components, uh, these things called nitrogenous bases. This, was, this one is thymine, cytosine, guanine, and adenine. You don't really need to know all of that at this point. But these chemical pieces, these letters, if you will, make up a code. This sequence of T, C, A, C, T, T, G, G, T, C. Uh, that means something. It tells the cell how to build something, how to build a protein. And um, every single living organism uses the same code. If you take DNA from an oak tree, it'll have the same letters, T, C, G, A. If you take DNA from an earthworm, it'll have those same four letters, T, C, G, A. It's the universal genetic code that all living things share in common.